Welcome to the look at look. I love any type of fan, and we got a fan from Camorian today. Period. Love to see it. Welcome to the cup, the currently unnamed podcast, where we put the real MT in reality, and we can come to us first to quench your thirst. I am Lana, your resident evil diva, and I'm here to give the tea, spill the tea, and drink the tea because you know I love me some tea. Her. And if you have some tea, you know what to do. Hit me up. I am currently just drinking on a little bit of water here because you know hydration is important. But if I was drinking out of anything else, I would probably be drinking out of my cup mug. Uh huh, uh huh. And I have a feeling smelling that um, I might need to throw a party today because I kind of think we might have a panel full of cup mugs if I'm correct. Hmm. Wow. Hello, guys. It's your favorite black queer content creator, Komori, a.k.a. Sparkling Alien. And today I was drinking my favorite juice. And I watched in my special, uh, all brand new, cut Yes. I'm not, I'm not going to feel left out anymore. Beer, beer, beer. <laughs> <laughs> we love that for you. I love that Corey has now joined and gotten a cup mug with all of the rest of us. So yay. And you can get your own cup mug. You don't have to look, you can feel not left out. Get your own cup mug at Lana G's Creations.etsy.com. The link will be in the description below. Her. And yeah, we are here to talk about UK versus the world. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Episode four. It's time for Snatch Game. Yes. <laughs> Period. So, but before we do that, before we jump into it, let's get some business out the way. While you're here, if you're here, and we see you there, subscribe to the channel. Hit that button. It takes a few, half a second to hit that subscribe button channel. Hit the subscribe button. And uh, we appreciate all of you who have, and we appreciate all of you who will. Hit the subscribe button if you're a fan of drag, race, or anything dr- Drag because we cover all things, almost all things drag. I'll say, almost all things drag, and we're going to be putting out content all the time, so you don't want to miss it. Hit that notification bell too, so you won't miss a single episode. Also, if you're a fan of reality TV, we got a channel for you too. You can go to the Cup TV, and reality TV season is heating up right now because we've got a lot of competition shows jumping out at us right now, and we're out here talking about them in these streets. So hit that uh, subscribe button over there at the Cup TV. And if you're a fan of Eurovision Song Contest, we got a channel for you. And you could go over to that at the Cup ESC. Hit the subscribe button over there. Eurovision Eurovision season is ramping up because all the songs have to be in by the 16th of this month. So everybody's trying to get their songs in. And so a lot of song reactions and a lot of Content is coming out over there, so be sure to go over there as well. And if you want to join the Tea Room, which is our membership channel, you see that button down there below. It says join. Join the Tea Room. Get exclusive content that nobody will get but you. It won't come out on the main channel, so get the exclusive content that's in there. And you can join here or you can join at Patreon um, if you just like Patreon at Better, which is fine. Go join over there. And um, it's $5 a month. Get some exclusive content. We got some stuff lined up for you. So, um, yep, those are the things we got. We're excited for all of you. And, um, yeah. Now, we got the business stuff out of the way. Let's get into this episode. Because the episode starts 
And we said goodbye to Jean Burst Blonde. Oh. And everybody, some people were sad. Some people were like, better her than me. And so what it was, it was, it was, it was a it was a sad moment for Jumpers because you know Jumpers didn't have the worst look of the week, but didn't perform the best in the challenge. So that was what sent Jumpers out of the door. Mm-hmm. But um, so then we get to the couch, and everybody wants to know. So Tia. First of all, congratulations for being in the top again, you know, being in the top. She's like, yeah, it feels weird. Never had this experience before. And I said, but we want to know who you would have voted for. And so she was like, this might seem a little weird. And I hate this part, but I went by who I uh, thought should go. And it was John Burr's lipstick. And everybody was like, oh, so she's not doing the UK thing. And I was like, or is she doing the UK thing? Because um, she then quickly goes over and tells uh, Teresa and Gossi that she's not coming for them. She's not trying to do that. She was hoping to get the heat off of the UK girls by offering up a UK girl. So it's like one of them have to go. If she goes, they won't think we're in this alliance. So Tia's trying to play strategic, and I kind of like it. Yeah, I'm just so happy to see this overall goal from Tia from her season. I think she's now, I think her coming out, I think she's more confident about her abilities and her drag and more like, you know what, just leave it out on the floor and just we just kind of like have, a, have fun, have a ball. So I'm very excited for her. Mm-hmm, absolutely. And so we see the... um. So they go and they, they drag and everybody's kind of just like, okay. So we go to the work. They're just happy to still be there. So they go to the next day in the workroom and everybody's kind of just like, okay, we're new day, new, you know, new, new, new winners, new things. Everybody's showing off their badges. And trying to figure out what's to come next. And I was waiting for the alarm to sound. And, ooh, girl, she already had had hers. But we didn't get that. Ru just walks in and was like, hey, y'all. Hey, ladykins. And so I was like, oh, oh, hey, girl. <laughs> Ru comes in and um, I lets everybody know that uh, it's time. It's Snatch Game time. But not just any old Snatch Game. Snatch Game Family Edition. And I was like, oh, what's Family Edition, Rue? And so we get that later on and find that out. But La Grande Dame got to, um, since she was the winner last week, she gets to choose. Was it? No, it wasn't La Grande. Yeah, I got I- no, it was um Scarlet, 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 yeah, yeah. Scarlet one, Scarlet, yeah, Scarlet, Scarlet one last week. I say it wasn't LeBron. It was Scarlet got to choose which family she wanted to be a part of, and she got to uh, pick her family. And so, uh, yes, so Scarlet was like, okay, well, I, I after they got in situation and sat down, she was like, so. Who won your snatch games? And um, three, four people helped raise their hand. LeGron raised their hand. Um, Keta raised her hand. And Hannah kind of raised her hand. And they were like, and who lost their snatch game? Or who went home on their snatch game? And Tia and Teresa was like, yeah, we kind of lost. And then it was like, and who has never played Snatch Game? And that was Gossi and and Scarlet, which I was like, oh, I didn't know Scarlet did not play Snatch Game ever. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, learning. I'm learning. And then Maria was in her own lane. In her own lane, just like, and I did okay, top three, but didn't win, didn't lose. So that was that. And so Scarlet was like, okay, well, 
I think I will choose Hannah, which I was like, duh. I, obviously, I would have picked Hannah first, too. And then she picked um, T- uh, Teresa. And then she picked Tia. And I was like, oh, interesting choice. You picked the two people who lost their snatch game. But I think she was like, they might have lost, but they are funny. Maybe they lost in their season and they wrong, but but they are funny now. So she picked the funny comedy queens, if you will. And uh, and so the other team was left with La Grand Dame, Marina Summers, uh, Keta Minaj, and uh, Kathy Kendall. And baby, that was a that was a choice. They were, that was a group. That that was a group. We'll talk about it. But um, yeah. So they they were kind of Legrand was kind of like a little annoyed that she was left over in the leftover group. Mm-hmm. But she was just like, but okay, all right. So we get a little workroom stuff. Rue comes in to try to talk and find out who everybody's going to be. Now, please forgive me, y'all. I did not take the notes that I should have taken because I was I watched this this morning as I was getting ready to do something else. So I didn't get to take the notes that I needed to take. So I can't remember who everybody was. So, but and I I, I know I know uh, my colleagues who are going to watch this later be like, ugh. She didn't take the notes. And I'm like, <laughs> no, I don't take the notes. I I leave that up to the two of the to to, to, to them to take the notes. But uh, I will start taking better notes and be better prepared for this. But I don't know all the people who were people. I know some. So we'll yeah. we'll get through. We'll get through. But um, so Rue's going through asking people who they were going to be. I know Keta was going to be Fran Drescher. She was the nanny named Fran. Scarlett was going to be the Statue of Liberty. But at first, she said Wendy Williams. And I was like, oh. But then she was like, the Statue of Liberty. But I'm gonna say, I was like, oh, oh, okay, okay. I thought she was going to be Wendy Williams for sure. For real. But no, she was Statue of Liberty. Um, we had, um, oh, okay. We had Tia was going to be uh, one Henry VIII's second wife who was beheaded. And um, and then we had Teresa, who was going to be Henry VIII's first wife, <laughs> who actually was the one, the first, the wife who he did not kill. She just happened to die of, of, of uh, she was the one who survived. So good on Catherine. <laughs> yeah, she, oh yeah, um, cause um, cause I know the um, whole reference cause um, there's actually like a musical called Six. Based yes, on- I love Six. Yeah, based on that, so the first one she on um, the first one she was divorced. Yes, so he, he divorced her, and yes. then um, Tia Tia's one he he chopped her head off. Yeah. The next one died um of natural causes of birth. Yes, so I think she was getting, and then the fourth one got beheaded. No, the fourth one got divorced because she was ugly, yes. but she still had a beginning to have having a good life. You know, she was ugly. He, he just he just didn't wasn't attracted to her, but then he was kind of like he. Uh, I think he kind of grew to like her more. I mean, I don't blame it, baby. Your universe come out ugly, but I don't care, baby. I, if I got this power, this nice little thing you gave me left because I was ugly, right. baby. Okay, that would be a bitch. I got, I got to be. And then that would got beheaded, and then I would survive. Yes, she survived. <laughs> but yes, it was interesting to see. And I think, yeah, that was it. That was all on that side. It was uh, Tia's, uh, Henry, the second wife, and Catherine, his first wife, mm-hmm. the Statue of Liberty, and then Hanaconda was Shirley Temple. <laughs> and we, the funny thing about that was because then this was like film, like right before um, All Star Eight was airing. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so the thing is, so we would have known how Jerry would have done, how how do that. So, and, and the thing that's fun about it is this is the second time that she has played a character that has won Snatch Game in a previous series or a season. Right. Right, because she, she was like Manelli in her season. She won, I think, like, I think Lexington Show. Yeah, it was like Manelli in her season. So now, and then Jimmy won All Star Eight. So it's kind of like, hmm, how are you gonna do well? But I think Hannah is very 
But I think Hannah is, is a very funny queen. I think she could do any kind of camp, any character. So I was kind of like, hmm, it was kind of funny too. It's kind of like the shade, the little shade kind of bit. Like, you can say, I can, I can, I, I can kind of, I do jumbo. I, I, I can do it. I can do it. Like, <laughs> I think it's funny. I think it's hilarious. But um, so after the, the other side, we had La Grand Dame, and she was, I think she was the first, the former first lady. Of France. Oh, yes. I don't know. I, I've heard her name, but she was that. But she was that. But she's like a supermodel type of lady mm-hmm. woman. Um, and then we had uh, Marina Suffers, who was Manny Pacquiao, boxer Manny Pacquiao, who's kind of homophobic, but she's trying to play them as just not that. Um, and then we had, um, like I said, Keta was playing a nanny named Fran, Fran Drescher, mm-hmm. and then Gothi. Oh, yeah, Gothi Kendall, she was Kim, um, Kate Woodburn. Yes, Kate Woodburn. Kim Woodburn. Kim, Kim yes, Kim. Kim I know, I, I know Kim from the UK because I yes. love her. Yes, she's the clean it lady. Like, she gets mm-hmm. things clean. And so, yeah, that's who got the Kendall was. Yeah, we, re- we remembered. Oh, we yes. Remember everybody was. Great. So, everybody was going through, and Rue was giving her opinion, like, mm-hmm. maybe you should do this. She tried to make Gothi open up a whole lot more because Gothi, I felt so bad for her in this moment because she mm-hmm. was just not letting loose. She was not mm-hmm. letting go of anything. Like, I was like, girl, come on. She, look, pay, well, she 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 didn't um what 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 am I trying to say? She she didn't <laughs> <laughs> she, she, she just didn't I I, Yeah. I mean like Gothi, like I don't know, I feel like I think it's different because you know, I think it's I think it is there for a first out to be honest because if you're mm-hmm. a first out of a of any series of, the, of any drag race princes around the world, you really have not to really show what you've got. I feel like thinking about it too, got the and back back in season one, which is like I think about five years ago when it aired, or and then a year ago when she was filming for it, you know, she was still insecure. She wasn't sure about about what she wasn't sure what she could do. Or you, you can tell she was very nervous. Even just why like her her two runways is her presence. You can tell she was very overwhelmed and wasn't sure and still kind of like insecure about herself. So now coming back, you know, she's I think she's willing to learn and approve for herself mentally. But I think also you think about it, it's kind of hard because you know she never really got to show a, show really anything at all. And plus, you know, there was something had been done on your season, something that's new to you. You know, kind of got vulnerable or. You're afraid of oh wow, how how many people like react to it or I think it, it just does just a small insecurity issue but also it's kind of like she has a wall and we're like understand that they're trying to let her come out her break, break our wall but it still is not moving like we can't like it's, we can't break her yeah, unfortunately she, she has a wall up she she seriously is was in a just a state of self doubt in these moments. Mm-hmm. And yeah. when she was talking to Rue, and she was like, I don't... Like, Rue asked her what her character would have been in season, in her original season, and she was like, Ozzy Osbourne. And he was, she, he was like, give me something. Give, give, me, give me a little Ozzy. And she was like, shut up. And she was like, no, give me more. Like, I can't. I can't. Like, she was so doubting everything. Mm-hmm. And Rue just wanted her to open up a little bit more and let loose and be more... Like, Shannon, I need my bed, my pill, Shannon. And she was just like, Yeah, yeah, okay. I okay. Need like, that's all I got. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, she's not going to do well in this snatch game if she does not open up a little bit. Mm-hmm. And we were right. Um, <clears throat> spoiler, we were right. She didn't do well in this mm-hmm. <laughs> snatch game. Mm-hmm. But we'll talk about it. But, um, that was a moment, and then it, it was really much Rue just giving critiques and trying to get people to, you know, do their best and open up and do whatever. But we're just going to go right to the Snatch Game because that is where we are. And the Snatch Game, y'all, 
So we went through the list of who everybody was. And so at this point, we can just give um, a little, just basic thoughts about how each person performed in the Snatch Game. We don't have to be long-winded. We can just give a little mm-hmm. uh, basic stuff. So we'll start with, well, first of we learned that the family is like, it's going to be like Family Feud. We yeah. got family against the Sita family. And our guest judges or panel, oh, again, I didn't take the notes. But you see them. They're lovely humans, beautiful ladies. I think the one, I think the the, the black woman. I think I I, I know she's friends with Simon Cowell. Okay, mm-hmm. I know she's I know she's an artist. I, mean, I think mm-hmm. I, her Simon Cowell are very good friends. Okay, mm-hmm. that's where I know her from for sure. But I don't know the other one, but I know who her. I think who she is. She's very close to Simon Cowell because she's very like in the music business in the UK. I think she's very popular, a popular um artist in the UK. I think that's that's how I know her from. I haven't heard her music, but I know she's very like I know I know she's close to Simon Cowell. That's how I know her, kind of, from yeah. But I, I love the whole family three aspects because they actually they did the, they did the same exact thing last season of UK versus the world. So I, I'm glad they're bringing it back too. Also, I like it, but it's kind of how you kind of pick. Also, I think it's very more tougher because you know you're in. It's like you kind of like trying to kind of back up the jokes and the on the or kind of like the um, back up the banter and the jokes and like with your fellow competitors and then. I just I love the whole setting of it too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I I'm I'm, I'm looking up, <laughs> looking mm-hmm. her up and seeing. Uh, oh, oh, okay, yeah, she's a singer. She's a singer. Cool, cool, cool. Yep, 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 yep. But she, she, I didn't know she was. Oh my God, she's sixty. I mean, she looks good for sixty. She looks amazing. Wow. That's why I was like, wait a minute, she's sixty. Wait a minute, girl. Baby, you are snatched. But, but I guess black don't crack. Okay, work. Amen. I mean, I mean to that. Amen to that. Work, mama. But okay, so let's start with the McDonald family. Let's start up here mm-hmm. with uh with how we thought Marina did with Manny Pacquiao. I think she did, I think a very decent job. Like uh I I, I love that she had fun with it. Mm-hmm. I mean I mean, I, like it, like uh, it, I, I didn't like, I didn't never laugh, but it, I still enjoyed it. If she was fun, like it, I'm not saying just for bad. I think this was like very like. Your microphone just cut. Oh, yeah. hear, hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I was like, yeah, it was like, like she landed everything very well. So she's mm-hmm. very consistent with landing every joke. So I think it was fun. Like I didn't see like like I cast it out loud, but it was still fun, and she gave yeah. energy, and like yeah. you could tell, like she. At least she she, she was a bombing. Yeah, I think as pretty much every person before her, like I would just watch the scene. Like I was like, oh my god, she bombing. Then oh lord, she's bombing. Then the next one's oh lord, she is bombing too. I was like, oh lord, Maria, the please of the Lord. And then it's like, me like, okay, you know what, you got it. You, you ho- I think I think she was holding it down for this team. I think she was holding it down for this team. I think say like her. Her team was uh, like was doing critiques. She would have been the best of the team. She was the best of, of her team or her family, for sure. If I was like the snatch game character, but it was, I think it was safe. It was decent overall safe character. She never did like bad or good. It was it was average. She was a hundred percent safe in my eyes. Just perfectly mm-hmm. safe. She didn't mm-hmm. do bad. She didn't do great. She was just safe. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it. Look, I ain't gonna hold y'all. <laughs> that's, that's just it. Um. Keta as Fran Oh, like I, I was just like, oh man, because like I don't, because I, I, I watched Holland on her season and she, or the character she was playing. And actually, let me tell you, when I say she went balls to the wall, and she, like, like that was like she had me cackling. Like I was living what she did on her season, so I was kind of like, I was like, Kat, I think Kat can do well in this. Like I'm sorry to break, and but Kat, I think Kat is kind of. I think kind of soon, like I, I feel like she just relied on that her little one laugh that you know, Fran Escher does, but it's not always that too. I think Fran Escher's just more than just a laugh. And I feel like she got her head again. I feel like I don't know. I feel like she got her head again. I feel like I don't know. I think once she feels like, oh well, you know, I'm not giving it. I think she just kind of gave up. You know what I mean? It's kind of like I'm, I'm kind of like damn, I feel bad. But sometimes kind of dang, you know, you gotta, you gotta just, just try your best, just work, just, just, just give it, leave it out on the floor, you know. During a, this might be your like your last chance, 
to in front of Rue too. So I don't know. I, I feel like she got in her head once she knew it wasn't going well. That she's kind of like, you know what? I'm failing. Let me fail. I clocked out. That's what it gave to me personally. She bombed. Let's just keep it 100. She bombed. Mm-hmm. Next, got the Ken doll. She bombed too. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> she bombed. For me, because for me, I know cause I know Kim Wimber is like the first time I ever know who she was. Um, It was Celebrity Big Brother UK, which I'm so excited. It's coming back and next, come, oh, it's coming up. Oh, Oh, it's coming out this week. Oh, yes. I'm so excited. So um, let me tell you, she was the queen, the queen of the baby. Well, I said she was insulting that pimple in that house. Let me tell you, it was let me tell you, she was she was comforting too. Let me tell you, it was so bad that one time security had to come into the house. It was because the whole argument was about to go about to get physical. Like she, like, she was helping having the whole house in the rambles. So I was like, I was like, I was like, hmm. For me, I was kind of like, God, they really again, maybe. For such a big character, like for someone who knows how, like, like her insults are like, like they like when she insults somebody, Lana, like it's so proper that like, she speaks so proper and clean, and she does it so proper and clean, and and she and she and she, and she, and she, she has a kind of like that mean kind of tone, like kind of got the tone, but it's kind of like you're playing, it's kind of like soft tone, like Kim is like Kim is cause speak like like proper and thing, but she but it has like that um. Mm. Right. And you missed the whole oomph, like it just needed more. It, it needed more, and you, you kind of played like it's, it was getting like very like twenty five percent of it. And I felt like I felt like you know I thought you know, you no know, the whole thing was rude when it got you. Like, I need to kind of like give more, but she still kind of just she had to walk up again for Sanch game. It mm-hmm. was it's kind of like can I just shake you for a bit, like 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 shake you? Can I hug you? Like I don't know what's going on. Yeah, it was just not funny. It's just like, and and we've seen Kim, and she can do so much more with that character, mm-hmm. and she just didn't. She just didn't. And then we have Legrand Dom, my Carol. That's who it was, Carol or something. Mm-hmm. Um, my problem with this character is, I don't think she. I think she should have just did a different character. I don't think this was the right character to do. Mm-hmm. I felt like this character just wasn't. It for Legrand. I think Legrand could have done so much more mm-hmm. in a different character, but even with you, this is the character you choose, you have to make it funny. And I don't think she did. It just wasn't funny. It wasn't like if she was going to be this supermodel that's rude. Da, da, da. Like, like she should have played that up to the point where it's like, I'm rude to everybody. I'm rude to the host. I'm rude to the guest. I'm rude to one of the contestants. I'm just rude. And it just wasn't that. It just wasn't funny to me. I, I think it's hard to, because I feel like I was thinking about it, you know, also, like, we don't understand, like, French, you know, those French kind of terms and stuff. I feel like maybe if she would did it on Drag Race Friends, I think it might have projected very well, and it probably would have been funny if, if she was on, you know, Drag Race Friends. Also, you think about a RuPaul and Michelle's or folks, RuPaul humor is very different than you know what Nikki Doll when she was with Nikki Doll on Drag Race. So it's two different people's perspective of humor, how to, you know how they receive comedy, and also thinking about it, we do somebody a person that no one knows, you know, coming up like I don't know who the person is. I think it also gives you plenty kind of opportunity to kind of like leave it out on the floor or do some random stuff. Like you know what, like, maybe the person that I know who she is would never do that, but guess what? For in for for this challenge, I'm gonna just do it because I want to make real love. At the end of the day, you want to make Rue laugh. And I think I think with the whole lip thing, I remember I think Rue Paul told us something about that. I think she, and they think I, she did say she did listen to she, she did listen to what he had to say, but I think and but I think it the way she, it still didn't work with how she wanted to. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately it just didn't go it didn't go out as well. And you know what I mean also the, the whole I think her when it came to critiques too on the runway with the um, French accent. I think like, like, like you have you had your accent over an accent, mm-hmm. so I, and, and, and then which meant, and then her saying you know I always like rehearse everything, which kind of like you know what I, I see it now. I think she tries to rehearse everything so much instead of letting it come out naturally. I think she is naturally very circular. Like, she is coming to go. Like what I saw like from the first two episodes, especially that talent show, like that that's that's funny. I feel like you know I think you know I think. You don't necessarily have to rehearse stuff. Just let mm-hmm. it come naturally and just just relax and just let it flow. Don't I understand because 
we I think I think we're like I'm also a perfectionist, so I understand I want to like make sure everything's perfect, this and that and that. But then I kind of realized like you know you don't want to be perfect, you know, just mm-hmm. let it come naturally. I was mm-hmm. come naturally, and you know what? And people see it, and it's fine. I think hopefully going forward, you just have to rehearse everything. Just come out and do it. Yeah, yeah, get be prepared, but don't come out like don't be too prepared. That's right. like, what I'm saying. Yeah. So then we move to the Sunita family. I said Sinta family first the last time, but it's the Sunita family. And we have Shirley Temple by Hannah Conda. Now this this side of the table is a whole nother like it's bars and leaps above the other side. Honestly, in my opinion, Shirley Temple, but Hannah Conda, oh, sh- I just laughed. I just laughed because of the absurdity of somebody like Hannah Conda, who is an older person. Who is an old as RuPaul, an older man says. RuPaul said, "It's it's 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 it's, it's when an older man is playing a seven year old girl is always like jarring." But Hannah did it so good, like it was so funny. I thought when um, Jimbo did it in All Stars Eight that that was going to be the funniest I've seen somebody do a Shirley Temple, and I was like. Oh no, because I thought Jimbo was hilarious doing Snatch Game, doing Shirley Temple. Like I, I, I laughed so much, but Hannah was right there, was right there, and I laughed and I laughed and I was like, "This is hilarious." I didn't think it was gonna be so funny when she came out and started tap dancing, and it was like faster, 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 and she just kept going. It was so funny and then I thought she had such good comedic timing her answers were perfect and they were it was so on the nose with Shirley Temple I thought it was hilarious I thought she ate it up she was my top person of the week for this game yeah I love yeah I really love her impersonation it was and I'm for me Maka like you know she she kind of looked, to me, she looked more like Shirley Temple than Jimbo did, realistically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, feel like, I, I feel like, because Jimbo was very tall. As, Jimbo as tall as Shirley Temple. But I feel like, it, it kind of took me out of the fantasy. It was kind of funny because she was tall and she was Shirley Temple. But I think her, I think I think for me, what made it perfect because I think Hannah's, Hannah's height is very, like, you know, Hannah is short anyway. Mm-hmm. So her being Shirley Temple is it, kind of like good because like, she's very short. She could put like a kind of like, like a, like a like a little child for Snatch Game, and like her jokes landed. It was it was it was she did a very good job, and she, and she had and she she gave she pretty much gave the essence of Shirley Temple, which I love. So yeah, I would I I enjoyed it. She always like I always laugh. She she always loved the comedy. Yeah, and yeah, and then we had Scarlett playing the Statue of Liberty. She killed it from the first line when she came out. I was like, can I put this down? I've been holding it up for 146 years, bro. And I was like, she's funny. I thought she did a good job. I thought she was funny. Um, it was interesting. Um, nothing. I don't think, it, like, was she the funniest of all funny? No. But was she the work? Was she bad? Absolutely not. I thought she was just really, she was good. Mm-hmm. I thought she was good. Yeah, I think for me, you know, for her first ever snatch game, which I'm kind of like, dang, like it took you like versus the world to a snatch game. I thought, you know, I I thought she would at least make it to a snatch game. I think because she is very funny. I think she's very a very good performer or like um I think when it comes to improv and acting. So I think her doing yeah, I just love I love what she did. But I think also like that with doing someone that you know you don't know what she could do. I think to me like that's for me that's like a perfect character you could do. And do anything off on because mm-hmm. you know it's actually a liberty. It, it, it don't speak. It don't move. It's a statue. I don't know what that statue sounds. Yeah, like. we, we don't what know what do? that statue is thinking of us or what they what they doing right. every every day. They and they just see boats, people just taking pictures, all that stuff every day. Like we don't know what, what they're saying. So right. we don't know that like. this is an opportunity for her to just go wild. Yeah, I love that. It was funny. It was funny. And then we had Theresa May playing Catherine. I thought she was all right. I think if we had a weakest link on this team, it was probably Theresa for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, she was safe for the most part. I feel like I think she to me, 
She was um uh, high deal like far as snatch game rankings. It was um Gothi, Kata, a grand down, then it was her, then it was Marina. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. how I feel like you know what? Maybe like maybe say like those two weren't there. I feel like she would have been the bottom for yeah. sure. Yeah. For sure. I, it it was say it was it was one note. I mean, it was better than what she did in her season. I think, but sometimes it, it, it sometimes snatch games like Air was cup of tea. Air was you know forte, but I think she she did she 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 did all right. It was okay. She did. I, and my my only thing is her doing this character being next to Tia, who did Anne Boleyn. It kind of overshadowed her character because Tia was amazing. Tia was so funny to me. I think I, between her and Hannah, I think I might have laughed a little most at Tia. I, so I think maybe Tia was my favorite of all. But <laughs> because Tia was just so freaking funny. And she would make jokes that was very much like, and as, you know, like, I can only speak for myself here, but getting your head chopped off is not a fun thing to do. You know what I mean? It is. Yeah. She stuck to character. She was very funny. That my my eyes are down here. Joke was was hilarious. I think Tia just ate this one up. She just really did, really really well. And I was very happy for her. Yeah, I'm very happy. I feel like you know what, Tia's like you know, let me just let go and mm-hmm. be myself. I think, and she let go. I feel like you know what, maybe back in her season. I think you know, I think it was just like you know, for me because who watched her, I think her confidence wasn't there. Especially because you know she was in, a, I think going like going her, to her, her first snatch game, she she was just in the bottom twice because this was um this was, this was coming back from COVID, the mm-hmm. whole thing. And so it was still kind of like you know, she's I feel like she's always getting what RuPaul wanted from her. Because Ru- RuPaul, cause RuPaul, like, I think RuPaul is like I like you don't know it, but you you're a star, you are a star. I think she just need you know, to like take time to like the own the fact like you know what I am a star, I am worth it. And now Sarah like come back and we're just kind of like you know let it go because I think she is a funny queen. It just you know what it just it just insecurities, and I think she let those insecurities get in the way of her this time around. And in this time she actually shined through and was funny. So I'm mm-hmm. very proud of like to me so far out of everyone. I think for me Tia has pretty much I think the whole for me of, of to me of the ugh, ugh my words <laughs> Tia for me has. The Tia is an example of a full 360 redemption or a glow up. Oh, so absolutely. It, she she is a definition of that. And we're seeing it too. She has been doing well. Yes, yeah, she has. Yes, yeah, she has. But um, so it's it was safe to say that we all thought that the Sadita family did way better than the McDonald family. But um that was that that was um that was just a given. We just really felt that <laughs> they were just better. But um so we get back to the workroom after snatch game and people were talking. They're like, Do you feel like how do you feel about snatch game? Do you feel okay with it? And Hannah was like, Look, I don't mean to oh, I'm not usually a person to toot my own horn. I'm not usually a person to just Say I did great, but I think I did really good in this one. I think I feel real good about my performance. The people who felt good about their performance should have felt good about their performance, and they did. And the people who didn't knew they didn't. And that's how one-sided this Snatch Game was, the family edition, because it was like, <laughs> LeGrand Dami was like, the only part of the McDonald family that did good was the actual McDonald person. Um, she was the actual only funny one in the group, and everybody else was kind of like, eh. So, um, people were worried, and uh, some people were like, look, I'm just gonna go and start getting ready for this elimination because <laughs> I got a lot to do, because I gotta make up for, the, this runway has to make up for how bad I did at the Snatch Game, so it was interesting to see. But then we had a quick conversation about dating in the workroom. And, and um, we had um, Legrand and, and Keta 
were talking about how they date and Le- Legrand was like, I think Keta dates more than me. And Keta was like, oh yeah, I, I, I definitely <laughs> more dating. And Legrand was like, I'm a long-term relationship kind of person. I had a boyfriend at 15 and um, and then it was it lasted for a long time. And then, you know, so, but now I think I'm getting, the older I get, the more loose I get. And I was like, okay, Legrand, I'm work. And um, we found out that Marina Summers has never had a boyfriend. Marina said, I've never had a boyfriend. I just haven't met someone who I felt is worthy enough of this beauty. As That's her words. Those are her words. But then she was like, in, in confessional, she was like, I just never met someone who wanted to be with me and not Marina Summers. And she was like, I just didn't don't know how to handle you know, she said, I want to deal with somebody who wants to be with me despite the flame, the the, the glitz and the glam and the fame. But um, yeah, so she's never had a boyfriend. And I was like, okay, shocking, but word. And that really was it. That really was the whole conversations that happened in the workroom before we got to, uh, to the music. So we come up and we get to the judges work. I kind of like this look from Rue, but I don't know if I like it. I don't know. I think I could see the corset line, which bothers me. Uh, um, so yeah, it was, I, I don't know if I like it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm a fan of the dress, but it's all right. I can see the corset, but it's all right. It's, it's all right. But I do like the guest judge look. <laughs> I mean, I love and like I love I love her daily. That's my crush. Because mm-hmm. um, I know for, he's he's a diver, so he's a diver. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, he acted. Um, I remember he was 14. I believe when he was in the. In his first ever Olympics, I think I was like 2008. He was in the Olympics. He was 14. I remember, um, cause I never knew he was gay, so I was kind of like, oh my god, dang. But and I know, so um, I like, I love, I love he, he's cute. So first, first, so he's queer. And I was like, yes. So, but also, um, he has a his husband is American. So, and they have a um, I don't know. I think, I think their son is like four or five years old now. They have a son, a beautiful son. So yes, and I don't know if he's gonna be doing. I think I think he's doing the Olympics this year. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure, but I think I think I think we'll I think we'll I think we'll see him in the summer summer Olympics in Paris. So yeah, but he looks very good. Um, I remember like at a young age he was um, I know his story about his coming out story with his with his dad, mm-hmm. and it was a very yeah it was kind of like a a tough tough time for him but i think eventually it, it grew his confidence you can just tell with this look how confident he is now of his sexuality and his being mm-hmm. and he has done the, i think the amazing things i think a very good example of i think people in the uk or i think globally as a diver who is queer so definitely so i'm so excited he was on this episode i was like he's someone i know in yeah. the uk he ain't he ain't now it was that but the category is Gone cruising. Ooh, this is cute. Logan, shout out to you. This is cute. Mm-hmm. Under the sea. Give it to me. Per. This is cute. Up first. Keta Minaj. Oh. I freaking love this. This is amazing. I think for me, I love Keta's point of view. I love her unique fashion style. Like what I love her, she gives you very High conceptual and unique drag, but also is it also has that fashion aspect, which I love. This the asymmetrical elements to this look with the different different fabrics. It, it just works very it works very well together, which I love. So it was it's giving me very like nautical zaddy, mm-hmm. nautical zaddy diva renas. So mm-hmm. I loved it. I loved it. I did too. Um, I thought this look was great. I was like, okay, Kata, I'll see you. I'll see you. And I 
like it. It's very Jack Sparrow, but high fashion, like Pirates of the Caribbean. What I love so much is that instead of having like a wooden leg, she got the gold stuff on the leg, and so it's not like a peg leg. It's like it's so good. Like all the different mm -hmm. mismatch of fabrics and. It's so good. I, I love that. We got an anchor on her nipple. It was what? Stupid. I love it. I thought this look was amazing. It was good for me. It was good for me. Scores. Uh, I'm going to give it a 95. I gave it a 97. Mm -hmm. I loved it. I thought it was good. Up next. We have Charitza with three boobies. <laughs> I, I love it. I, it, it, I like. Uh, I would say it was cute. It was cool. Mm -hmm. I like. I like the elements to this. I like the elements to this. Like the, the three titties and the octopus arms. So it was very cute. I, I maybe I just wish the execution was a little bit better, but I do love the creativity and the thought of this look. So. It, it was it was a solid a solid good look a solid nice look. Yeah, I mean I like the concept of it. I love the inflatables all over and wrapped around. And I think I wanted more in the dress. I think it's a mm -hmm. cute dress and the cute silhouette and the cute shape. But I think I wanted more with the dress. But I think she was relying more on the inflatables, which is fine because they're good and they make for an interesting you know thing to see on the runway. I liked it. I wasn't just. But when you stand it next to the others, some of the other looks, it's like, okay, it's, it's still good. But it's a good, really good solid look. I think everybody did really good on this runway. I'm really not mad at anybody on this runway. I will be saying. I will say. Scores. Uh, I'm going to give it a 85. Um, For me, I gave it a... Um, <laughs> this is so weird. I gave it 87. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you gave her, her a 95, and this time you gave her an 85. I gave her a 97, this time I gave her an 87. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> it's cute, though. Up next, Miss LeGrand Dom. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, it is, it is essentially John Paul Gaultier. I mean, the, the, is that exactly <sighs> the, exactly John Paul Gaultier? It's she, she is wearing really it. John Paul Gaultier. She, she is giving. She is serving. Okay, baby. Like, she, I mean, I mean, I was like, there's no way that Lagrande is gonna we're gonna not not slay this wrong with me. Like, this is a per alley, John Paul Gaultier. No, this is this, this is high fashion quality. You know, me, Miss Raw, like. I love that, and I'm I'm very happy that because uh, I'm very happy that it went, I love this look because I remember the carpet episode of French Jean Paul Gaultier was the actual first ever guest judge in the mm -hmm. whole runway of that. So to mm -hmm. I, I love that he's actually using the, these queens for looks now, and I know she's very big in the fashion scene in Paris. So friends, so of course, so I'm, it, everything's about this because everything you know. I seen this look in, on the collection before on the runway, so it's so nice to, to see it on Drag Race. Is John Paul Gaultier? I mean, come on out. <laughs> Who else is rock, rocking the runway with John Paul? An actual John Paul Gaultier piece, not the knockoff, not a version that you made yourself to look like a John Paul. It is literally John Paul Gaultier. And it's stunning. What else can you say? Scores. Full cup. <laughs> Duh. Duh. Like. <sighs> Duh. Duh. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Scarlet Envy. Big. You know what? <laughs> no, I, I was that. I was clowning Scarlet last week. For that look last week, I was kind of like, <laughs> you were clowning her last week. For that I, was kind of like, I was like, well, I'm gonna get Scarlet, like, like Scarlet, like high level Scarlet. And baby, she showed up tonight. Yes, yeah, she did. I love the whole Titanic meets drowning 
Jack, like the whole reference, like like very like sea ghost, sea like sea siren, this like Titanic, the whole reference being like frozen in the water, and come back from the water. Like I love the whole I love I love it. Everything, the detail, the detail in his outfit, the the makeup, the hair, the wind the hair. Like, it was just to me, it was perfection. Part, yeah, my choice of my personally my second fave look of the night. Yeah, it was so good. It was so good. I, I love this makeup. I love the wheel in her hair. I love the details. I love the dress. It looks like, yes, she could have been on Titanic at that time. And when the ship went down, she froze, but she came back looking in her style because she, she was going to dinner that night and it was a fancy dinner when the, when the Titanic froze, you know? It was mm-hmm. good. It it was good. She looked good. I really like this look a lot from Scarlett. Scores. Oh, up oh, full cup for me. All right. I gave it a 96. Still good. It's still good. Ah, oh, but that makeup is. You know what? I'm going to give it a 98. I'm going to give it a 98. <laughs> makeup. Hey, yeah. The makeup is doing it for me. The makeup is doing it for me. Yeah. Because I just looked at it again and it's like, ah, oh, it's so good. It's so good. 98, yeah, for sure. Gothic I mean, she looks beautiful. I will say this is this was my least favorite night. The thing is, it wasn't bad in any way. Everything about it is it looks amazing. It looks good on her, but it's underwhelming in compared mm-hmm. to what everyone else got on the run with. Like, you know, it was it was the least kind of like gag where they kind of like you know very like it was simple. Mm-hmm. Like the thing, the thing, the thing it's about being like simple and effective and still get like. No drag. It was missing the whole drag. It was the whole drag aspect of it. That's what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. And for me, it, for me, this is a nautical thing. You know, I want to go like nautical, art, like sailor on the way to wall. I mean, I love. The, yeah, it it was cute, it, mm-hmm. but you know, cute next to gorgeous. Yes, gorgeous going in the bower cute. And, Absolutely. And you know, I wanted more drag from the. Yeah, culture. yeah. This was like I said, it was cute. It was nice. Is it ugly? No. Do I get the theme? Sure. I get your seashells and all that stuff off the sea. But it wasn't drag enough. It wasn't enough for me to go, oh, so stunning. And even like you said, sometimes simple is so beautiful that you still love it. This was simple, but it was like not simple to that point. It was simple and cute instead of simple and beautiful. And I, I, she looks amazing. I like the hair, but it's just still not enough, but it was still cute. She still will get a nice, decent score for me. But scores, um, I'm gonna give it a 74. Okay, I gave it an 80. Still okay. cute, still cute. Miss Hanaconda, I mean, she looks beautiful. I like this. It- it's probably it's probably my, my favorite look from her this season. I think I love mm-hmm. I love it. It's very like old drag I means for like Victorian with the lace. Like it, it it was I like it. It's very it's very classic drag. Very classic. It, it gave classic drag on the one which I love. I yeah. it, a, a beautiful beautiful look for her. Uh, oh, stunning look for her. She looks so beautiful in this. I was like, uh, oh, this is the most good. Like, not that ha- uh, she wears, she's ugly or she wears ugly things, but this mm-hmm. is the most classically beautiful look that I've seen from Hannah this season that I was like, mm-hmm. oh, this, it, the, and her, the way she did her makeup, her eyes are popping. I love this look. I love the little lace, like the, the, the lace that's, it's kind of revealing. It's kind of sexy but innocent all at the same time. It's like, you know, I'm cute. I'm fully covered, but I got these points of cutouts where you want to be like, ooh, I see some skin. Ooh, I see some skin. And then when she turns around and the back is all laced, it's like, ooh, I see some skin. I love that. It's like, it's a, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I thought it was really pretty. I thought she looked gorgeous. Scores. Uh, I'm gonna give it a um 89. 89. I gave her a 90. Mm-hmm. Give her 90. Miss Tia Coffee. Okay, I love 
like this, this is an example of well, simple and effective. Mm-hmm. I feel like, like, like I like she's still doing the theme, but she's like, I'm not gonna overdo it. I'm still gonna give you the theme, but still make it a simple look, make it effective with the octopus arms. The octopus arms is very detailed and exquisite. You know, the fit of the bodysuit, jumpsuit is is is, is very well proportionized, and the little ship is cute. Nice little ship to add to the look, which is cute. It was a, it was very a very solid look for Tia. She is definitely like. Like the globe, like I'm um, like the globe is happening. You just seeing this amazing glow in front of you. And you're just seeing just you just being very proud, proud mm-hmm. of her. But like, like I feel like a proud mom, a proud, proud <laughs> mother sister. Like seeing Tia just see Tia now just really like just owning it and mm-hmm. really just like, giving slang. Like it's just good to watch her personally. Absolutely. She looks stunning. Um, I just ugh, I can't say enough. Uh, that she knows she's finally using what the gift that God gave her, which is long limbs and her tall body. Like she's so tall that she's using these limbs to mm-hmm. make beautiful silhouettes. Like this is just a latex suit, but when you put the latex suit on the right person and it's so, it looks like that, that's, like like Michelle can call it squid ink, even though it's just octopus, but it just looks so inky and slinky and so right. And then she gave a good concept with the bolt in her hair. And it's like, yes, the boat is on the sea. I'm the the uh the, the thing under the sea. Like I'm the character under the sea that's the darkness under the sea that could take you. It was such a beautiful story that she was telling. But in the simplest way, like you said, simple yet effective. This was the definition of simple and effective. It was beautiful. I love this. <laughs> Scores. Uh, I'm going to give it 89. 89. I gave her 98. I, I, I just love right. it. I just love this. She, she worked. She worked it. And then Miss <laughs> Marina Summers. Oh, bitch. <laughs> You know what? You know what? You know what? You know, this is like, you're my girl. But I, like, let me tell you. Let me tell you, I want to say, this is why I to look at Philippine drag. Because Philippine drag, when I say they come, when I say, when it comes to Philippines, they are competitive. They are competitive. Like, every time, it doesn't matter anything what they do, whether it's sports, whether it's singing, whether it's fashion, whether it's drag, when I tell you Philippines or it's like Miss Universe, Philippines is gonna bring it to you every single time. And they're gonna fucking eat it every single single time. And Marina ate again the water titties. The way they were jiggling. I was like, yes. And her hair or her long hair with an anchor. I was like, bitch, you know what? Conti. Cunt. Like like I can't say cunt. Stop saying that. We can't say that. Monitors. It was slay, slay, slay. <laughs> this has got us limited monetization. <sighs> Marina, you got you got me in trouble, Marina, because this was so good. <laughs> I can't, I can't. I love it. It was so good. It was definitely good. Um, it was like, oh, Jesus, the water boobs, the water shoes, just good, just good. Then the anchor hair, and it was yards and yards of hair. I was like, you, girl, Ugh. she goes slay every single time. Marina Suburbs to me has not missed on this runway, and I don't think it's going to happen. She's stunning. She's absolutely stunning. And this was this was so good. Like this was the what I said why she was where she was. And I agree with it because her snatch game, meh. But this ugh, ugh. so yes, scores. My third and final book cup of the night. Duh. 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 It was so good. 
love that bitch. It was so good. Like, girl, stop. Stop it! Too good. <laughs> it's too good. Oh. But yeah, um, that was the runway. We get to the results and we find out that Marina is safe, as she should be. We find out that Charissa is also safe, which I'm like, deserved, 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 should be there. Oh, wait, I got to I gotta do it. I got to get there. Um, yeah, I got to get there. But yeah. They serve, they serve. Deserve, deserve. They deserve to be safe. They were, the runways definitely in their snatch game held up for me. So I was like, okay, work. And then we find out who our top three are. And our top three are Hannah Conda, Scarlet Envy, and Tia Coffee. And again, again, I say. Because they ate it up and on both the runway and the snatch game. So, work. Um, we found out our bottom three. Olegron, Keta, and Gothi. And unfortunately... They serve! They serve! That's <laughs> just what it is um, in that moment. So then we found out our top two are going to be Hannah Kanda and Tia Coffee. And they have to go to the back and um, talk and come up with their decisions while the judges debate over their favorite ABBA song. So that was going to happen. So I don't know about you, Kamalian, but for me, going into the Untucked, I was like, I kind of think I know who both of them would pick. Did you have a, a, a idea or or did, were you sold on either Keta or Gothi, because, oh, those were the bottom two, by the way. I should have showed that. The bottom two was Keta Minaj and Gothi Kendo. So oh, yeah. did you go to the back when they went to the Untucked? Did you think you had an idea of who each Hannah and Tia were going to pick? Um, not gonna lie, not really yet, but I know going into this, I was kind of like, it's kind of it's kind of, kind of like an even playing field. They're both, this is both their second time in the bottom. Mm-hmm. But if you think about it, Ken at least was in the top. Ken at least has a win, a top mm-hmm. two on mm-hmm. her belt. What got they has not. But also for me, if I would, I would part. I first, I would have chose Gata to go home first. I just felt like you know, it, it felt like she kind of just just checked out. It, it felt like she was checked out, and it felt like for me, Kita wanted to be there. I think Kita knew like I, I did do bad, but like doesn't mean like I don't, don't want to stop. Like I'm here, I'm here to prove myself. Like I have more to give. Like I want to be here. I want to show more. And I just think that's just my first thing about it is like you know, Kida is it's national cream from Holland. You know, Holland Drag Race didn't get that much praise because you know, fortunately, Kida she got raw. Like she should have been top three on her season. The scene, just the um, fortunately, it seemed her her Holland queens get put in the pot because what happened on Drag Race Holland and the BS that happened. You know, you come in it's like I have been approved because you know. Not everyone really knows about us Hollywood queens or what we can do. So, you know, just come in for like, like representing your own country is a lot of pressure to do well because you don't want them now. But also, like, you know, I have this amazing opportunity and I want to make sure I, you give my all, everything. So you can tell that like, Kayla still wanted to be here. And personally, right. I feel like, you know, I see the fight more. Like, I'll give you another shot. You know, I think, you know, think I would have still, yeah, I would have said Kayla regardless. I mean, and you know what? I'm like, I'm gonna give you at least one more chance to prove yourself. And unfortunately, if you are on the bottom again, you know, I have to send you home. That's just the fairest thing to do. But at least you like, you know what? At least you want to be here more. I feel like mm-hmm. Gathe was still kind of like, I think Gathe is still learning, but I feel like she was still kind of like, you know, just clocked out. Yeah. At a, I mean, and I don't know. Um, I think Tia, I think Tia, I think Tia, I think person Tia had a hard time with this one because like, she, don't, don't spoil it yet. Don't spoil it. What happened? That, that, that's why, like, but I think I think coming. I think Tia hard time because like Tia's like, I just sent a UK sister home. Yeah. So if I send Gatha home and I just said, like I'm not gonna send you home, it's gonna like boom. I'm breaking a promise that I made to Gatha and Teresa. But also at the same time, you know, I I sent John Burke home, so it was like, you know what? 
oh, she's so she's already like, you can't alliance thing, but if I sent Keto home, but it was like, oh, wow. So, but I thought you said you're not gonna say, I thought, I thought you know, the UK alliance was a thing. So she was kind of in the middle of, she was kind of in the middle or a tough position. I think with Hannah, Hannah, it was different because kind of like, I'm coming to this, you know, I'm not sure. But I think, I think Hannah, I think Hannah chose Gabby for sure. I think Hannah chose Gabby for sure. Yeah, oh, I think so too. But yeah. I think T, I think Tia was in the middle for for this one this week. She was in the top. She had a tough decision to make this week. Mm -hmm. I think it was for sure. Um, it was uh, for sure um, hard for Tia to figure out which one she's going to do. But um, yeah, I think. Um, <sighs> I was kind of my I I didn't know where it was going to go, but I had an idea. I kind of figured Tia would pick a certain person because of had she had to decide over head and heart. And I think Hannah not having a dog in the fight, like these are not like none of these were uh Australian girls. So it wasn't mm -hmm. like she could be more logical, more thought like, okay whose track record is better whose this is better like who wants to be here who's showing that they really want to be here so it was interesting so then they go and have their conversations God is kind of like I think with Hannah she was kind of like you go do what you want to do I don't really know I'm saying I really I want to be here but I'm not sure what you want to do or what you want to hear from me I think she was saving her plea for Tia mostly so she'd be like look we're sisters you know we're doing this UK thing I really I want to be here I just don't know how to tell you I want to be here but you know I want to be here you know if that makes sense mm -hmm. and I think she was trying to plead and get the heart strings pulled with Tia but she didn't she realized she didn't have that same with with Hannah so she was kind of mm -hmm. just like yeah I want to be here so here it is but um we get to back to the runway and we have the lip sync for the win and once again I don't know it's um crying at the disco check is the name of the song? I don't know who it's from. I'm so sorry. Me either. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, okay, work. I don't know who it's from. I'm so sorry. Y'all go shoot me. Y'all go hate me. Y'all was like, how are y'all doing a podcast and y'all don't know nothing? I'm so sorry. I will take better notes next time. I promise because I wasn't expecting to do this. But here we go. But I know the song was crying on a uh, discotheque, crying at the discotheque. And we yes. saw Tia and uh, Hannah, and I thought they did a good job. I thought both of them were it, really it was, yeah. interesting. I thought both of them did a great job at this lip sync. I actually enjoyed the lip sync. Yeah, it was fun. It was it was fun and campy, which I love. I think they were both having fun, mm -hmm. so I had fun too. So they, they both had some good moments. I just, I think Tia, I think Tia, I think Tia really took over this week for sure. I mean, this was Tia's episode overall. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. She pulled out the tissue and she was crying and Hannah was like trying to console her, but like, girl, I don't know. When she got on the floor and started doing the temper tantrum and said crying at the discotheque, I was like, oh, Tia, yes. Work. I thought they both, like you said, both campy, both funny, both entertaining, which made it entertaining for me. And so I liked it, but Tia Coffee ate it up. She won. I was very proud of her. She was proud of her. My favorite part was Rue was like, she was like, oh, I wrote a Rue Peter badge. And she was like, oh, unfortunately, we ran. We <laughs> have to run out of Rue Peter badges. She was like, oh, uh, <laughs> dang. dang. But it was fun. But that was good for Tia to get her first badge of any season she was on. So I'm happy for her. This was a good episode for her. A good mm -hmm. episode. But then she decided that she was going to eliminate the competition. And she got out Keta. And I, I was, was very like, sad. Mm, yeah, I was like, I was very was, sad. I was like, ooh, dang. I, I, I was like, oh, I was like, ooh, man. Right. 
it was I was oh, I was sad about it because I really was a fan of Keta and I was really enjoying her. I wanted to see the rest of her looks, but um yeah, I was sad, but Keta is gone but never forgotten because baby you ate up. You ate up and can't get mad. I can't get mad. Yeah, I mean, I'm sad to see her girl compared to Lee. I, I know we all are person, someone who, who watched her season the, the way she got robbed so hard at the dominant of the competition. Yeah. Like, she was literally like, no one, except like the person who won, which I was happy who they won, but like, I can't everybody else. Like, she was top, had of everybody else, and then she just get robbed by someone who cheated, who cheated and broke the rule. Made top made the develop before her. It's kind of like what the, like, what the so we was like we was like we won this we like we won we won this whole moment for her to come back like yeah like yeah like yeah like her deserved crown you know what I mean and unfortunately to see it not happen it's kind of like it's kind of hard she she went from fourth place to the fourth person out of the competition it's kind of like dang so it's like but I love Keila she's an amazing drag queen I think Keila you have done Holland very proud and you know I'm glad. I'm glad that you texted me on Instagram because I was fans. I was fans of her on the show, so right. hopefully, hope yeah, yeah, we texted each other for sure. Yeah, I thought right. I was like, yeah, really, really have, but yeah. So, kid, don't worry. I got your remember video is on my list, things to do list, and don't worry. I want to show your looks on YouTube. I got you, girl. So I'm gonna give you some love. Of course, I'm excited. But a little quick draft date. It's not official. This isn't the official draft date update because I don't have the official numbers. Mm-hmm. But I will just say, myself and Anissa well flossed Keta this week. So oh. I was like, well, I'm down to two people. And Anissa still has three people. Mm-hmm. And Brandon still has three people. And everybody else, Logan, David, and Dawn, all have their entire. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. David and Dawn have lost. Jumber, so but they are so they're down to three people. Oh no, they Dawn's down to two people because she had a wrong just gone to. Mm-hmm. So Dawn's down to two people, Davis down to three people. Logan has a full team. Nope, a wrench is gone, does not have a wrench. So, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking at this graphic. So Logan is down to three people with Tio, Chavisa, and Gothi. David is down to three people with Marina, Hannah, and Legrand. Dawn is down to two people with Tia and Teresa. Um, I am down to two people with Marina and Gothi. Um, Anissa is down to three people with Marina, Hannah, and Scarlett. And Brandon is down to three. Is there were three people with Tia, Legron, and Scarlett. So I don't have the numbers, but I do have the graphics. So. That's that. And on that note, y'all, we're going to get out of here because we we will be back next week or sometime at some point in time. I don't know. Talking about UK versus the world and um, the next episode. Um, same time, different panel. Maybe not even the same time. Different time, different panel. We'll figure it out. we go figure it all out. But, you know. Uh, podcast be podcast and just like life be life and so we don't really know for sure but um, we'll be back when we get back to talk about UK versus the world subscribe to this channel subscribe to our our reality ch- channel the cup TV subscribe to the uh, Eurovision channel the cup ESC join our membership channel get some exclusive content here join the team room or here or at uh, Patreon the links of all of those will be in the description below um do a super thanks. We appreciate it. Anything that you give us will go right back into this podcast to make it better and stronger and greater. Um, if you keep scrolling down, you can get your cup merch. Not limited to, but the cup mug or any of our cup merch. Get all of the things. We appreciate you. Do the things and that shows that you support us because we appreciate you very, very much. And on on that note, me and Kawari gotta get out of here. So cheers, y'all. Cheers. Bye. Bye, y'all.